If you saw the community post the other day, we do like to give away a free copy of any games we have for a sponsored video, so there'll be a copy of this one available. Just let us know down in the comments what your favourite visual novel is. Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. Now today we've got a video for you based on a new physical release from Funstock Limited. This is Vampire the Masquerade, the New York Bundle. Now these games are both available separately on the eShop already, but have been released physically in this bundle, and we're going to show you the bundle itself and then talk about the game specifically. Okay, all right. Vampire the Masquerade, the New York Bundle, what's it all about? Well, let's find out. So let's begin by looking at the physical options via Funstock themselves. So you have a standard edition of this which comes with both games on the cartridge, mm -hmm. the games being Coteries of New York and Shadows of New York, or there is also a collector's edition which has a few uh, few other nice bits inside. You have a USB stick which also has a keyring attached and this actually has the game's soundtrack on digitally mm -hmm. and there is an art book within this package too as well as obviously the games. These are available via Funstock Limited's website as well as some other select retailers. Yeah, it's the collector's edition that we've got a copy to give away and that'll be mailed directly to the winner. So then the storylines of both games, they're slightly different. We'll give you a brief setup of, of how that works. So in Coteries of New York, you get to choose from one of three different factions. They're the clans that are in the city and they represent different clans and the vampires. Yeah, so you have, as Mark said, the three different clans that you can choose from being the Brujar, the Ventru, and the Toriador. Apologies for any mispronunciation mm -hmm. there. And basically, these have different abilities that come with their particular clan, and they will become useful in certain situations in the game when you find yourself in a bit of a corner as you converse with the different characters. So in terms of the story of Coteries, let's start there first, depending on who you pick, obviously, but the basic outline is that you start as a human who is entrapped by a vampire, turned, and then faces death because the vampire should not have bitten you you need permission from the high council to do so your life is spared and you're taken under the wing of a lady called sophie and so starts your adventure as a vampire where you start to create your own coterie by talking to various characters and creating bonds and allies so do those allies then as you say join your own faction yeah so basically you'll get to a certain point within the story where there are a few different options of people that you can speak to suggested by your or sire Sophie and you can then choose to go on nightly missions to see these people and uh, this will open up different story arcs okay so each one has their own kind of narrative from that point onwards and yeah. you'll, you can choose which of those you want to pursue with the overarching objective being to befriend them to such a point that they then go forward into the story with you you know yeah so the world of new york here it's not the new york we know is it this is set within a slightly different universe known as the world of darkness which i believe is based on the franchise or the series vampire the masquerade is a tabletop game and yeah. the world of darkness is kind of a setting within that i think these games are based on the fifth edition right. of vampire the masquerade and um it's a world where vampire Vampires obviously exist as well as some other creatures mm -hmm. unbeknownst to humans or well, a select few humans know and kind of help them to keep themselves secret but there's a hierarchy it's very much the traditional vampire thing of that high society yeah there's almost as I say a hierarchy within that they are kind of thought of differently some are seen as below others in the eyes of of the members and uh, you you're kind of trying to find your place within this world and your decisions that you make will, will determine where you end up you know? Right, yeah. So I'm looking at the three different clans. You said the Brugia, they're classed as the rebels, the Toriador are the artists, and then the Ventru are the aristocrats. Absolutely, and they all have particular powers, and as I mentioned earlier, they come into play as you converse. So it may well be, for example, I think the Toriador's power is that they can uh, will people to do their bidding mm. by being quite charming. Charming, that's a good <laughs> way of putting it. Whereas uh, the Brujar has celerity, which is sort of super strength, high speed. And you'll find at certain points in the narrative, you are encouraged. You can either make a decision, ask a question, or you can try to use that power. Mm. And obviously the power of persuasion, the former one that I mentioned, comes in very handy at times, as does the ability to uh, catch up with someone or get away from something quickly, you know? And you'll start to find that these powers will help you in times of need but you might find that a particular conversational point is blocked or locked away because you don't have the power needed to unlock it and obviously a, a second playthrough with one of the other characters will allow you to see things you couldn't see the first time yeah from what i saw so far it seems like an interesting play on on human nature where it puts you in a situation where initially you might start quite quite weak as an all human then yeah. when you become a vampire suddenly you have all this power and then the moral choices become potentially a little bit more difficult yes that's very much a big part of it because mm. you as well as what I've just mentioned about that need to 
forge allies, you also have the need to balance having to feed on people that until a couple of days ago were the same as you, the yeah. humans, um, with not wanting to give in to the beast, as the game mm -hmm. puts it, and overfeed. So if you, every so often, you'll have opportunities to feed on humans, right. and if you choose not to, or if you, you know, owing to your decisions, don't get a chance to for a while, you'll see a red hue around the side of the screen, okay. and this is you kind of that frenzied state starting to set in. So it's very important that you do feed as and when you can. But again, it's when it's appropriate. Yeah. You know, there's there's a point <laughs> in the story where I needed to speak to someone subtly, and there was someone passing by that I could have fed on, but obviously. That <laughs> <laughs> kind of goes against the whole idea of being subtle, so I had to let that one pass. You what know? do you think I would have done, Glenn? Oh, you'd have gouged him, mate. You'd have <laughs> <laughs> bled him dry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's the point. It's, it's that fine balance. Yeah. And this game handles it very well because it's very well written. Mm. Very well written, actually. It's, it's probably the, the strongest point of the game. And I like the conversations that the vampires have. They talk about the taste of blood yeah. and the difference between certain people and how that affects how they taste. And it's, it's crazy, but the, the way that it's um, woven into the conversation mm. feels very natural whilst it being completely abhorrent you know yeah so it sounds like there's a lot of setup here for consequence but i think it's fair to say that this first game didn't have as much consequence for your actions yeah the consequence in this first one is more so about whether or who you befriend right whether you will befriend them okay based on the way you you act and based on your behaviors and obviously whether you do keep on that line of feeding and not mm. feeding you know and ultimately the story kind of plays out quite similar uh but it will it will change in terms of who comes with you, who yeah. your friends become. Whereas the second game, which we'll move on to now, which is Shadows of New mm -hmm. York, is perhaps more linear in that it doesn't give you the opportunity to choose which storyline to, to go down in terms of uh, having these different friends that you can meet, but it's more about there being a lot of endings that you could encounter. Yeah, so you get to, well, you have to play as a character called Julia um, as she starts out. She's a freelance journalist by the looks of things. And then things go slightly awry, and as you can imagine, she gets the choice to become one of the La Sombra vampires. Now, interestingly enough, my very first choice in the game, I died, didn't I? Yes. And it went to the credits. That's right. So I think there are about 15 different endings yeah. in this one so this one is very much like a choose your own adventure book mm -hmm. from back in the day in that you can die or you know that your ending will change much more than the first game and the point of that i don't think we actually mentioned apologies is that there is a murder that you're trying to solve um and that's that's you know kind of the uh, the reason for your being that's what you're you're trying to do as you go further into that game yeah i think having that singular character has allowed them to almost <laughs> build up that character a little more than they otherwise could you know they have that singular focus yes so she did seem really well written and I kind of already felt like I knew her. And then we were given choices nice and early, weren't we? Yeah, I think the difference between the two, see, I prefer the former, mm. I must say, but I think the difference between the two is, you, you've pretty much spot on with what you just said, is that the first one is about world building. Yeah. Whereas the character is just a vehicle to get you there. Mm. Whereas the second one is very much about this character that they've chosen that you, you know, you don't choose a character and therefore it's very much about building their story. So in terms of the visuals and the audio then, let's look at the visuals first. Now, obviously it's a visual novel, so there are a lot of static images in terms of character portraits and the backgrounds to a certain extent, although there are hints of movement that are handled quite well, aren't there? Yeah, you might see flickering lights or, or light shafts in the background. Things like people walking past illuminated by the light. Yeah, you see the silhouettes or you may see like a taxi drive past when you're outside in the street. It looks very effective actually. As someone that's played quite a few visual novels, this is definitely my my favoured way of seeing it handled and the character portraits themselves almost have like a like an oil brush stroke look to them certainly yeah. in some of the cutscenes where they become a bit more nuanced and uh, again it just suits the world very well it kind of has that that high art feel to it whilst being very grimy you know mm. It's funny, isn't it? Because when this game was made, things like AI art didn't exist. Mm. But now that it does, I wonder if it will have an impact on this. You can very clearly see that this was handcrafted, you yeah. know? Yeah, absolutely. In terms of the music, something that you don't always necessarily pay such attention to in a visual novel, it's actually, again, handled very well. It's very subtle. Um, there are times where it's it's quite obtuse because there are moments where something startling happens, C certainly at the beginning when you're, you're bitten and you're mm. turned into a vampire. But there are times where it kind of just kicks in. And I'll tell you what it reminded me of. You know, In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins? Yeah. That, that drum, yeah, yeah, yeah. that drum beat. At times, <laughs> yeah, at times you're just listening or you're, you're playing, I beg your pardon, and it just starts kicking in and it just gives me that vibe of Phil Collins in the air tonight. It's good. It works well. Yeah, there was a dynamic, yeah, it's, that dynamic sound is, is handled really nicely. Not a lot of games do that very well. You know, tie that into what you're seeing on screen. 
Yes, it's and good. it works very well it, with a visual novel, doesn't it? It does, and it's a nice, subtle loop. Mm. It doesn't feel like you're constantly yeah. listening to the same thing. I would say, yeah, the visuals and, and the uh, and the audio, they do exactly what they need to do, but they do it in such a way that they certainly enhance the storytelling, you know? For sure, yeah, yeah. I was trying to think of a pun related to Phil Collins, but I can't. Let me think about it, I'll see it coming. I can just think of the advert with the gorilla playing the drums. <laughs> was it Dairy Milk or something? That was great. <laughs> <laughs> So in terms of value then, we're talking about this physical edition specifically. You can pick it up from Funstock's website for £34.99 for the standard edition. What we'll do is we'll put links in the top in comment and the description so you can see the full list of prices. As far as game length, you're looking at about 10 to 15 hours to just complete them. And if you want to do a completionist run, then more like 20 to 25. Yeah, the first game has that replay value in terms of being able to unlock other conversational situations through different characters. Whereas the second one, obviously you can Mm -hmm. and have to choose a different uh, different path so yeah there's replayability in both so that's it as we said at the start if you'd like to win a copy of this just let us know down in the comments your favorite visual novel and glenn will check him because i wouldn't have a clue what they are yeah i very much enjoyed these games i've played coteries before and really liked it actually so it's nice to have both games on one bundle i love physical editions mm -hmm. anyway so that's always a win it's nice to see games get them yeah and uh yeah really good games enjoyed them nice the word coteries brings out your London more than any other word I've heard this week. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's nice to see it uh, flash out every so often. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Let us know in the comments as we say. Thanks so much for watching and to Funstop for sponsoring this episode. And as always, for all things Switch all the time, keep your Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!